What is wrong with you? Let me go! A violent cackle erupted from Matthew as he leaned close to me, pulling my chain harder to pull me against the door. Please don't do that. That's okay. Get angry. You know what they say. Angry sex is always the best. Oh my god. He went there. He went there. Matthew, the cinnamon bun, went there. Guys, the name's Rana Dragnail, and welcome back to Seduce Me to the Demon War. So last we left off, got some fun time with Matthew, got trapped in the demon world. Matthew came to get us, Matthew and his brothers, and then made the plan, and here we are now, going to get a room. Ah, uh, so let's continue. This entire experience was not something I expected to go through, especially since it was now interfering with my wedding. I was trapped in the demon world under a curse I couldn't break without the demon lord being killed and I was expected to wait. Oh, did I mention Matthew was being sadistic in our dream? Please tell me he's not sadistic in actual, the actual game. Please do not make him like that. He's too, he's too pure to be like that. Anyway, the entire journey to my room became one filled with mild anger within me. At least Matthew was here to help me through this, but I still couldn't help but let the situation sh sink underneath my skin. This wasn't fair at all. I knew Matthew could sense my anger as he lightly squeezed my hand, which was gently cupped in his as he walked beside me. Hey, what's wrong? I want to calm down, but I can't. You tell me to calm down, I will only get more pissed at you, so... I'm just going to naturally tell him. I let out a shaky sigh and looked to him, letting it go. It's just unfair, you know? This whole thing has become a large, complicated mess, and I... I gritted my teeth and squeezed Matthew's hand back. I didn't want to complain, as things were going to be fixed soon, but it was still infuriating to think that I couldn't do anything immediately. Matthew slowly released my hand and wrapped it around my shoulders. Hey, don't worry about it, alright? Think about it as a vacation or something. That'd be fun. Vacation in the demon world, except we're trapped here. For a week. Till we defeat the demon lord. Okay. A vacation? Matthew grinned and nodded, hugging me slightly to his side. Yeah, a vacation to, uh, see new sights? Um... You're trying, Matthew, you're trying, and I love you for trying to cheer me up. <laughs> I couldn't help the amused smile on my face as Matthew tried to make me feel better. It was another reason why I adored him. He did his very best to make sure that I was happy. Despite the crappy situation we were in, I was thankful for that. I wrapped my arm around him and nodded. Thanks, Matthew. Matthew smiled and nodded before kissing my cheek. You're welcome. Anything for you. No, Too pure for this world. I think. <laughs> Matthew and I continued to walk down the halls of the castle until we arrived at the same ambassador room I slept in before. 
I had slept in before. I guess that the room was mine for now. Stepping in, Matthew looked at around in slight awe. Whoa. Plus some digs. I had to giggle at Matthew's surprise. It was almost like we had stepped into a hotel on, va on a vacation. Except this one was forced on us until the end of a civil war. It was mildly messed up, but it was a situation we had to deal with. I walked over to the bed and sat down, letting out a sigh this feeling the softness underneath me. The bed was still as comfy as last night. Matthew, however, began to walk around the room, taking in the side of the decor. This is a really fancy room. I wonder what room the others got. I smiled, watching Matthew ponder for a moment before replying to his statement. Yeah, apparently this is the open ambassador's room. I was able to sleep here when I arrived. Matthew stared at me dumbfounded for a moment before slapping his forehead and shaking his head. Right, right. Time's different here. Holy crap, I forgot about that. Wait, huh? I became confused as to what Matthew meant. What did he mean about time being different here? Matthew looked up at me and grinned sheepishly. Well, uh, how do I explain this without making it confusing? Uh... Matthew rubbed the back of his head, staring at the fireplace before speaking. Well, you see, time moves faster here compared to the human world. Like, much faster. If I remember right, then I think the time difference is... Every five hours here is one hour there? Maybe? Wait, wait, huh? So if I was here for a day, then... Matthew took a moment to do the math before nodding, nodding and speaking again. Yeah, that's right. You were gone from the human world for about five hours. Five hours?! I was astonished. The time difference was really prominent and a little conf disorienting. Didn't that mean time moved faster here? I was getting confused, holding my head to try and unscramble my thoughts as the- As the collided. The collided. Okay. Whoa! Sorry! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that was so attractive, right? Matthew, however, rushed over to me and sat down next to me, hip to hip. Hey, don't worry about it, okay? We found you, so that's all that matters. I could only nod before looking at the ground. It was a lot to take in, but at least I wasn't missing, really missing for a day in the human world. However, I was going to be here for a week, so in accordance to the time difference, I would be missing for more than a day. How was everyone at home going to react? I could only hope that something was used as a cover to delay the wedding or the like. I looked up to Matthew, now a bit concerned. Huh? What is it? What happened while I was missing? Matthew frowned a bit and rubbed his head, running his hands through his fluffy hair as he spoke, staring at his knees. Well, when you didn't come with the rings, we got kind of worried and tried to call you. When you didn't pick up, we kind of panicked, but Irene and Iridessa decided to rush over to the house to see what had happened. They came back, saying you were gone. We pretty much scrambled to use our magic to wipe everyone's memories, reschedule everything, and use the time to find out what happened. Matthew pressed his lips together most likely remembering what he felt during my absence. I felt bad, but there was nothing I could have done to stop it. Matthew shook his head and continued. I forgot to mention that Simon took the rings, and that would, that's what started this whole shit. Oh my god, Simon. I guess we have to thank Simon for finding you. Without him, we wouldn't have figured out what happened. Oh, so now he decides to help. But he started this whole shit. Okay. Simon? Matthew nodded before, before stuffing his hand in his pocket and pulling out the infuriating stuffed animal. Are you serious? You brought Sidewind with you? Eh, that's fine. He's he's good to have company around, even though he's a mischief, mischievous little shit. Simon blinked a couple of times before looking up at me and giggling like he usually did. <laughs> Simon! Simon jumped from Matthew's hand into my arms and crawled up onto my shoulder, becoming immobile like a doll once he settled between my neck and shoulder. I gave his head a little pat before looking back to Matthew. Well, he was the one that hid the rings. I had to find him. I know, but after you were taken, he helped us pinpoint where you were, and bam, here we are. Matthew chuckled a bit as he ruffled some of Simon's fur. <laughs> I guess this little furball was useful after all. Yep, yep, he was. Thank you, Simon. 
even though you were the one who started this shit by stealing the rings. I could only smile before leaning over to kiss Matthew's cheek, making him gasp slightly. Uh huh? Hee <laughs> hee, at least you found me. Soon we'll be able to go home and get married like we planned. It gave me a little hope to let the thought sink in. Despite the terrible situation we were in, we would soon be able to go home. I was positive we would win this war, and everything would work out just fine in the end. Matthew seemed to agree, nodding as well with a smile. Yeah, we'll go home soon. Matthew wrapped his arms around me and nuzzled the side of my head, making me softly giggle. My body felt relieved to have, an, have him near me, causing me to wrap my own arms around him. My heart was jumping with joy regardless of the situation we were in. Simon took the Simon took to the queue to hop off of my shoulder and quickly scattered across the floor and up the fireplace mantel, resting on it with the decor that sat upon it. Matthew, however, soon released me and fell back onto the bed, feeling its softness. <laughs> Man, it's been so long since I felt a demon bed. What's the difference from a regular bed? Matthew grimmed up at me and crossed his hands behind his head, lounging back on the mattress. Well, demons don't sleep in this world, so we get very comfy beds just so we can lay back and relax on. Oh, yeah. Just like in the be in the first game, he's like, sleep is actually a thing. Right. Yeah, and plus for Damien, too, he told us the same thing. Wait, demons don't sleep? Nah, we're too paranoid that people will kill us in our sleep. I get that feeling. Like when you're out somewhere and then you hear footsteps and then you're like, oh man, I'm going to be killed tonight. <laughs> then how the heck do you function? Energy and food. As long as we have both, we can pretty much be awake 24-7. The way that Matthew seemed relaxed about the whole thing made it seem like... Be, liked, made it seem liked being here. Okay... A part of me was curious on whether or not he liked being in this world more than the human world, but I had to remember, he went to the human world of his own accord. Besides, he was ready to marry me and live his entire life in my world. Matthew stretched and let out a groan before relaxing back on the bed sheets, letting out a small yawn. Oh, I'm tired. You want to hit the hay? I nodded, feeling the exhaustion run over me, causing me to lie back and cuddle up to Matthew nuzzling into his shoulder. He chuckled before wrapping an arm around me. I love you so much. I promise we'll get home soon. I smiled, kissing his cheek before closing my eyes and drifting to sleep. Tomorrow was going to be a long day. However, as I opened my eyes, I found myself not looking at Matthew or in my bed, but I felt a cold ground beneath me and something tightly wrapped around my neck. What the... Oh my god, not this shit. Ah, help me. I looked down, seeing my skin dusty and dirty, which only added more confusion. What was happening to me? I reached up and gasped once more as I felt a familiar collar around my neck, a chain dangling from the front and running behind me. I instinctively grabbed the collar, trying to pull it from my neck, but as I did, something yanked the chain, connected to it, and caused me to fall back, knocking the wind out of me. Ugh. Ah! I turned my head to the chain to uh, to the chain pole to see a familiar imp demon glaring down at me and gripping onto my chain. It was the same imp demon from the vision Matthew showed me when Diana came around. But how could this be? I quickly grabbed the chain and tried to yank it from his hands, wanting to be free, but found no strength to actually pull it out of the imp's grasp. The imp merely cackled and pulled the chain again making me fall forward onto my stomach. Gah! I froze. This was another dream, and I could tell that Matthew was going to be the villain once again. My mind began to panic as I scrambled up to my hands and knees, looking around at the predicament I was in. I was in a large steel cage. My chain hung out between the bars in the hands of an imp guarding my cell. I had no neighbors, nor did I hear anyone else in the space with me. This was definitely a dream, and I needed to wake up before Matthew came around. Yeah, that... okay. Who knew what he would do with me? This was a dream, after all. I looked around the room, slowing my breathing, slowing my breath and trying to think logically. What could I do? The first thing was to do something about the chain around my neck. Then I could try and break the door down somehow and be free. 
seemed like a good idea. I quickly grabbed the chain again and swiveled on the ground to be on my bottom, locking my feet against the door and pulling the chain back. I managed to get some purchase and, luckily, the imp couldn't manage to pull me, f to pull me forward from my struggle. No! A large bolt of red lightning suddenly traveled down the chain and shocked the collar around my neck, causing me to release a soundless scream. My body became electrocuted in red light and energy, sending waves of pain through every part of me. As he finally stopped, I let out a gasp and fell back onto the ground, shaking from the aftermath. My body felt entirely jittery and licks of pain brushed over my nerves from the shock. What the hell? I could barely look over at the imp from the pain I was feeling, seeing him smirk at what he had done. However, as soon as I saw the grin appear on its ugly lips, a foot jammed into the side of the imp's head, causing it to buckle over. H huh? You fucking pig fawn! What did you do? Oh shit! Bounty just cursed! The cinnamon fawn just cursed! Ah, no! Don't do this to me! Don't! Do not do this to me! Ah! Oh my god. My eyes glanced over to see Matthew in his demon form, glaring daggers at the fallen imp with his foot jammed into his cheek. As he looked at me, still angered with the snarl across his expression, I gasped, seeing the familiar cold gold over color over his eyes. The evil Matthew had returned. Gingerly, Matthew took up my chain and pulled me to the door, leaning in and keeping the chain beneath his head so he could bring my head as close to him as he could without being me being pulled against the bars on the door. Staring into his eyes, I was surprised to feel calm and almost hopeful that maybe this was a different Matthew, one who wasn't cruel and full of ill intent. Then why does he have you locked up in a cage and he's in his demon form? Girl, I don't even know. Then again, he kept me in, a, in the cell and didn't release me. There you go! So that was a sign that I was wrong. There you go, now you know. Despite this, he spoke calmly and almost comfortingly. Comfortingly. Did he hurt you? Yes, he did! Go, go punch him in the face or something. Of course, I nodded. Whatever electrocution the imp had done made me feel like I was dying for a split moment. Matthew, in response to my reply, glared at the imp with a deadly pair of eyes, causing the victim in question to sleek back against the wall. I ordered you not to hurt her. If she's hurt, then she can't give me proper energy and I won't be able to rule this world properly. Do you know how much of a problem that would be? Oh, Lord. The imp opened his mouth to protest, but as soon as he did, Matthew formed a knife in the air and chucked it into his open mouth. What the hell, Matthew? A splash of blood erupting from behind the imp's head as the knife embedded itself into the back of his throat. With a garbled whimper, the imp slowly collapsed to the ground, dying at last. I, however, could only watch horrified with my hands over my mouth. What was going on? Matthew turned back to me and pulled my chain slightly, causing me to look back at him with fearful eyes. There. Now he won't hurt you anymore. That doesn't make me less scared. I'm still scared of you. Nah, not really. The other me is probably scared of you. Why? Why are you doing this? Let me go. Matthew's face slowly shifted to a cold, sadistic glare. I would. But how will I know that you won't run away from me? I began to panic. I wanted to be free. I wanted to run. But Matthew here wasn't going to let me go. And I didn't want to stay in the cell any longer. Despite every fiber in my body wanting me to awaken, I couldn't. I promise I won't run. Make me your queen! Don't say anything. Make me your queen! This was crazy. He had me as a prisoner, a slave to his whim. However, he seemed to care enough about me to kill someone for hurting me. It was worth a shot. Matthew, however, let out almost a bark of a laugh. <laughs> me, king of the demon world, marry a human? Like hell I will. Besides, even if I made you a succubus, your energy would be wasted. Come on, man, that is cold. That is cold. I'm going to... Why would you do this to me, Matthew? Why? My heart broke into pieces, but my anger flared. This was not my Matthew. I ripped to the balls and 
to the bars and snarl through them at my captor, imagining the man in front of me as a stranger and not the man as, I, as the man I loved. What is wrong with you? Let me go! A violent cackle erupted from Matthew as he leaned close to me, pulling my chain harder to pull me against the door. Please don't do that. That's okay. Get angry. You know what they say. Angry sex is always the best. Oh my god. He went there. He went there. Matthew, the cinnamon bun, went there. How does he know my weakness? I don't know. Oh my god. Let me just not. Okay. He went there. Okay, let me not. I snarled even harder, disgusted at his words. This was not the man I loved, nor would he ever be in my dreams. <sighs> Matthew only let out a chuckle as he finally drew back and slid his hand up to the end of my chain. I'm not in the mood to take your energy now. I'll come back another time. Thank you for not raping me. With a flash of blue energy, the chain in his hand vanished and reappeared above me, giving me enough slack to let me lie down, but only if I was directly underneath it. I grimaced and pulled at the chain, wanting to still be free from it, but only heard the chuckle of Matthew's cruel sadism as he turned and began to walk away. You better be prepared when I get back. I've got a world to rule after all. Can't spend all my time making sure you're ready. Get back here, you little... <sighs> a violent quake ran through my body and I began to struggle harder, making him laugh as he left the hall out of my sight. Let me go! Let me go! I shut my eyes tightly, pulling pulling and tugging as much as I could. Despite it being despite it being to no avail, I screamed once again, this time breaking the illusion around me and waking up at last. Let me go! I sat up, screaming through the air as my hands clapped themselves around my neck. My scream reverberated throughout the room, barely letting me notice Matthew falling out of bed beside me. Oh no, Matthew! <sighs> I quickly looked over at the sound of a hard thump on the ground, seeing Matthew's curly head peek out from over the side of the bed. His hand ran over his hair as a pained groan escaped his lips. No, I'm so sorry, Matthew! Oh, oh my god! I Ignoring what had happened, just happened to me, I scrambled across the bed and slid off of the bed to kneel beside Matthew. Luckily, he wasn't badly hurt, but he rubbed his head, obviously disoriented from falling out of bed. Again, I just noticed that he's shirtless. Whatever. To add more insult to the injury, Simon had crawled down from the mantle and began to poke at Matthew with his mini knife. Don't do that, you're gonna hurt him! Oh wait, thankfully the knife wasn't actually sharp. Thank you. So all I did was prod and poke at Matthew's skin without drawing blood. God, Simon! Simon, knock it off! Matthew flailed his arm, almost knocking Simon away with his hand. Taking the hint, Simon jumped onto the bed and began to hop around on top of it as his own distraction while I looked to Matthew. I'm so, so sorry! Are you okay? Uh-uh. Yeah. Y yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Oh. Matthew Grimmins, stretching his back and neck for before shaking his head and looking up at me, slightly blurry-eyed from sleep. Are you okay? Or did you have another nightmare? I looked down at the ground between us, remembering the nightmare I was trapped in. I could only nod, pressing my lips together, causing Matthew to frown. I'm sorry. Do you want a hug? Please? Please? Give me the hug. I need the hugs. Especially from you, the cinnamon, but even though you were being very sadistic in my last dream. Despite the nightmare, I still loved Matthew and needed him with me. I knew the dreams I was having weren't real, and even if they were trying to warn me of something, Matthew was still the man I was going to be married to. The man I was going to be married to. Matthew smiled softly before swiveling onto his knees and hugging me to his body. Laying my head on his shoulder... I wrapped my arms around him and closed my eyes, taking in his reassuring scent. As a set of knocks appeared at our door, Ma however, Matthew and I shot our heads in the direction of the sound. Oi! Time to wake up! We got grub! We got you, Sam! We, we got you! Ugh, can you not call it that? <laughs> oh, Carrie. Matthew and I looked at each other before scrambling up onto the bed, forgetting that Simon was on it. Oh, no. 
I slid across the bed and sat down, trying to make it seem like I had just woken up, as Matthew tried to crawl over, but wound up making Simon release a heavy squeak. Ah! Once again, Matthew fell off the, of the bed and landed on the floor, releasing another shout of pain. Is everything all right in there? Yeah, we're fine, James. You don't need to worry. We're okay. We're fine. We're fine. One Matthew's head. Simon, cackling at Matthew's mistake, scrambled up back onto the fireplace mantle and became a doll once more as I cleared my throat. You little shit. I tell you. Come in. As the door opened, Matthew threw himself onto the mattress, placing his head on his hand like he had completely planned to kneel beside the bed as his brothers and their wives entered with plates of food in their hands. Uh, I could actually imagine him doing that. That's so funny. Damien and Twyla! Yay! Damien and Twyla, the ones who are carrying extra plates of food, stopped and stared at us with raised eyebrows. <laughs> Damien, of course, looked over at the mantle at Simon before smiling and shaking his head, passing his extra plate to Matthew. See? He knows! He knows it was Simon who was doing this shit to Matthew. Thank you, Damien. Thanks, bro. You're welcome, Matthew. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Twyla. Twyla placed her extra plate in my hands and smiled before walking over to an empty space with Damien and eating. On the plates were sliced fruits, bread, cheese, and some sort of jerky. James and Sam, however, were the only ones who didn't start indulging in what was on the menu. So, we have less than a week to prepare for the Demon Lord. A kid, James! Please don't! I love you, but please don't! Not now, let me eat first! Come on! Let me eat. Ah! You know, fuck me. But I'm excited as shit to finally get a kick his ass into the ground. Did you just say fuck me? Okay, I'll do that. But it's not your route yet. So you gotta wait your turn. Okay? Ignore what I just said. The other brothers seemed to agree, even Matthew. However, I was stuck on the nightmare I had the night before. I unconsciously rubbed my neck, remembering the feel of the collar around my neck. Doing so caught Iridesa's attention. Hey, what's wrong? Did you hurt your neck? I instantly looked up and stared, seeing everyone now look at me in curiosity. I shook my head violently, not wanting anything to know what had Not wanting anything to know what had happened. Anything or anyone? I don't even know. I'm fine. I'm fine. The wives seemed unconvinced, but they nodded anyway. The boys, however, focused on the battle ahead of us. So, do we plan on training like we usually do? That seems to be the best plan. It's been a long time since we've actually fought in a battle. Have you fought in one before? The boys, despite the shame in their eyes, nodded slowly in unison. When they had to fight against Matthew... Not Matthew. I'm so sorry. Malix! Wow! Wow, I said Matthew instead of Malix. Please, please shoot me. Kill me now. I didn't want to say Matthew. Wow. They were in a fight against Malix and failed miserably before stumbling upon in my mansion. Part of us living in our father's castle involved receiving the occasional unexpected visitor. Oh, there's that too, I guess. Holy crap, man. I remember one time there was this group that just stormed in and tried to take on the old man, but he sent James to take care of him. I'd never seen James so pissed off before. <laughs> oh shit! I want his- well, we have, when he fought Malix in his route. Ah, uh, his- oh my god. I do have to say, Bradley Gareth does an absolutely amazing job at being the angry James. He's- he, when- when he's angry, when he's acting as James being angry, it is like he is actually angry in real life. That's actually really cool. Sam Alejandro for Sam's voice, too. He does an absolutely amazing job. Kudos to both of you. <clears throat> That's because they threatened to burn the castle down if I didn't surrender. Obviously, that was out of the question. Oh. Well, Sam, what about you when you got into those fights with the army generals? They weren't too happy about you being so testy with them. They got cocky and thought they could push me around. Fuck them in good riddance. Damn. The more I listened, the more of the battle stories seemed more about James, Eric, and Sam. 
Damien obviously stayed out of fighting. Good for you, Damien. Good for you. But what about Matthew? I looked to Matthew, seeing him simply eat his food, staring down at his plate. Did he have nothing to add to the conversation? I want to ask, what about you, Matthew? Matthew looked up at me in surprise, a piece of jerky wedged between his teeth and lips. Hmm? Huh? I fall back giggling at the sight, but as everyone turned over and looked at Matthew, I relaxed a bit and waited. I was curious to see if Matthew had any stories of his own to tell. To my surprise, Matthew swallowed the jerky in his mouth and shook his head. No, I wasn't the fighting type. Never have been, really. Okay, that is a bullshit lie. I have seen you fight Malix, and you fucked him up real good with the knives. You just threw constant knives at the fucker. And you stabbed him in the back, you just impaled him, and you just killed him with a bunch of knives. Okay, do not give me that bullshit saying you're not the type to fight. That is bullshit. My mind flashed back to him fighting Malix, and how he managed not only to, to not only duck and dodge Malix's gun, but also make Swiss cheese out of the devil in question. See? This is what I mean! This is what I mean! Why would Matthew lie? Don't lie to me! That is bullshit! Bullshit! I am calling bullshit on this. Sam scoffed and spit into the fireplace, making us all look over at him. What a crock of bullshit, Pipsqueak. Sam is calling him out too! See? Even Sam agrees with me! That's a load of bullshit! Bullshit? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Don't fucking play dumb with me. I remember you massacring an entire gang of Vince because they looked at your mom funny. I was the one who had to clean that shit up. Oh shit, man, that's- you a fucking savage! Whoa! Okay, they just let- they, they just- Wow. Matthew's a savage, end of story. I suddenly went wide-eyed at Matthew, who in turn stared at me with a fearful frown on his face. He got into fights here? I guess it was expected of a demon to at least get into one fight on their life. But Matthew and Massacre? That that didn't that doesn't match, but whatever. No, no, it, it wasn't like that. It wasn't me. Like hell, it wasn't. God damn, dude, shut up. Make me. I will. No, do not start fighting, please. Please don't. Sam and Matthew jumped out of their seats and marched at each other, slamming their foreheads together and snarling, fire burning in each of their eyes. Please don't fight, please. I quickly rushed up and pulled at Matthew's arm, trying to bring him back to the bed. Matthew, calm down! Sam, knock it off! Despite Carrie also pulling Sam's arm, neither of us could pull our incubus away from the other as they battled each other with their eyes. The air in the room became full of tense energy until, suddenly, both of the boys were swatted over the head. Fuck! Ow! Both of you, that's enough! Did James hit them? I gotta applaud, applaud for James. I'm applauding James right now because thank you. Thank you for n actually, literally, knocking some sense into them. I looked up to see James, holding his fist that he used to sock his brothers with a glare and paint it all over his face. Yep, thank you James for literally knocking sense in th into them. Matthew and Sam looked up at their eldest brother, both irritated and be at being hit, but silent enough to know not to talk back. Yeah, you see? Don't talk back to your older- your eldest brother. Better not, or James will s seriously fuck you up. A moment passed before Sam stood up straight and shook his head, finally allowing Carrie to pull him back to a spot where they could s sit down. Whatever. Matthew, on the other hand, straightened up and continued to glare at James, almost in defiance. Something sparked in his eyes, something that made me worried, so I pulled his arm back, trying to get his attention. Hey, come on. Matthew finally looked at me, slowly receding back to his normal gaze before nodding and rubbing his head over the newly formed bruise while sitting down beside me. Well, this is an interesting family reunion. What? Have you been watching this entire time, Diana? Seto! Diana's voice suddenly made all of us turn to the door and see her and Seto in the doorway with Diana leaning against the archway. As she pushed off and stepped in, Seto followed and closed the door. Can we help you? Possibly, if you all want to survive this war and go home. Especially you, my dear. Diana looked to me and crossed her arms under her bosom. What does she mean? Okay, so... Uh, what would the others teach me? 
Diana ran a hand through her hair, looking to the side as she listed off each leader and their skills. Sergeant is a brute demon, bred from a nomadic tribe. He most likely teach you the ways of the brute demon, using your fists and speed to keep you alive. Just like Sam. Okay. Shadow is, by definition, a shadow demon. So he'd probably teach you about dark magic, light manipulation, and assassination. That is cool, okay? That is really, really cool. Rabbit is a wild magic-based animal demon, using her animal-focused energy as her weapon. She'd probably teach you how to do the same. Faye? I am honestly not sure. I know they can change their size and use elemental magic as well. But to be honest, I do not know what they would teach you. Oh, nice. Uh... Well, I really do want to do Shadow, but... Faye... Faye seems really cheery and awesome, you know? And they intrigue me more than it. They intrigue me. I want to know more about Faye. Uh, I'm gonna save Shadow for someone else. Okay. So, I'll choose Faye. I, I want to see what they have in store for me. Especially since she's cheery, kind of like Matthew. Kind of like, you know. She, I said she's cheery, didn't I? I meant to put they, because I don't know their gender. Danny raised an eyebrow, but nodded. Faye was a wild card, so who knew what they would teach me? Still, my curiosity was getting the better of me, and I knew it. I'd try it. With that, Diana turned on her heel and left the room. Finish eating. Afterwards, you should start training. Everyone in the room nodded their affirmation as Diana and Saito left. Well, it looks like we'll be busy for the next couple of days. <laughs> This'll be fun. Man, training's gonna suck. It'll be worth it, though. Damien's right. As we all finished eating, everyone left eat to either train or do the things on their own. I left to start my own work, determined to be prepared for what was to come. The Demon Lord wasn't going to win. I wouldn't let him. I reported to a large grand hall. Apparently, it was strictly to be used for Sato and Diana, but since training me for defense became a priority, I was given the room along with my trainer of choice, Faye. I didn't know what made me choose Faye. They were indeed a wild card choice. Who knew what I would learn from them? See? Plus, plus they're really cheery. Kind of like Matthew, you know? They were obviously a fairy, but what kind of abilities did fairies have in the war in this world? I could tell that they were nothing like the fairies in fantasy fairy tales, so the idea of learning about them became a tantalizing curiosity within me. Yes, we're gonna learn about fairies! As I arrived, I saw Fla Faye flutter around the room, wowed at the space they were given to train me. Woohoo! This room is so huge! How the heck did we get this room? When did the castle even have this room? Holy crap! Dang, you are cheery as always. I giggled and stepped in, watching as the fairy flew to and fro from one side to the of the room to the other in excitement. Hopefully, they wouldn't be too distracted by the size of the room to train me. Hey, Faye. Faye, at last, turned to me with a large grin and flew close to me, placing their hands behind their back. Hiya! You ready to learn some cool tricks from a cool demon like me? I smiled. I, pi I had picked a good trainer. Nodding, I pressed my hands on my hips. Absolutely. I'm ready. Faye grinned before floating over to the far end of the room, cupping their hands together and calling out to me. Come over here! I tilted my head, confused a bit, but shrugged and ran forward, eventually stopping at Faye's side. They clapped in applause, which made me a bit more confused, but I bowed to them, amused. Alrighty! Now, race it to the other side! What? I'm supposed to be trading, not, not playing. Oh. Faye, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Before I could question Faye, they reeled back and zipped across the room towards the far wall. I rushed behind, trying to catch up, but didn't make it in time to beat Faye from touching the wall. <laughs> I win! Because you didn't warn me this was going to be a race! Faye looked at me confused, before rubbing their head. But this is training! Aren't I supposed to teach you how to be fast and dodgy and stuff? Oh, um... Um, that doesn't help a lot. I suddenly realized what I had gotten myself into. Faye had no idea what they were doing. 
A figure who was standing in the corner, watching the whole event, stepped out of the shadow, slightly surprising me as he walked up to Faye. Oh, why hello there. Boss, I think you should be teaching a human how to defend itself. Just saying. Faye turned around and flailed their arms at the figure. Eterminus, don't tell me what to do. I can do this. Hey, he's giving you advice, Faye. At least listen to him. Eternimus, Eternimus, I think that's how you say it. Eternimus let out a snort with an amused smirk, crossing his arms at his apparent boss, and shrugged. All right, whatever you say. I was just making a suggestion. They puffed out their cheeks at Eternimus before turning back to me. I became concerned. Would I be able to learn anything from Faye other than racing? Stay and try. I took a moment to take a deep breath and let it out. We gotta, we gotta stay and train with Faye. I'm not gonna give up that easily. Or Jesus Christ. Maybe they teach. Who knew what Faye had in store? Maybe they teach me how to grow wings or become small. Their abilities could be pretty useful, especially with wings. Faye pressed a finger to their chin before suddenly getting an idea. I know. I can teach you a really cool attack. I suddenly became excited. An attack? I knew the training was meant for my self-defense, but having an offensive attack would prove to be very useful in the war I was essentially about to jump into. Faye grinned at me before turning to the open space and holding their hands out. Closing their eyes and focusing their energy, I watched as a green orb slowly appeared before their palms, growing in size until it became the size of a baseball. Faye opened their eyes and gripped it with both hands, looking at me with a grin. This is called the Thornbush. Thornbush? Faye nodded ecstatically before arching their hands behind their back. Before arching their hands beha back behind their head and chuck chucking the orb forward into the space. As it impacted the ground, the orb popped like a bubble and released a cloud of green gas that had covered a large portion of the floor. The gas quickly began to materialize into a web of thorny branches stretching out over the floor and stopping just before where Faye and I stood. The branches continued to sway in the air, as if they were alive. Whoa. I was absolutely astonished. This seemed like a really cool trap, but it was- but was it effective? I turned my gaze to Faye to see them look to Eternimus with a smug expression. Hey Eternimus! Try and walk through it! With an amused grin and a roll of his eyes, Eternimus summoned his spirit and walked forward into the area where the bush had made claim. I watched in curiosity, wondering what the thorn bush would do. I gasped as the branches close, closest to Eternimus began to lash out and strike at him, only to be blocked and cut down by his spear. With a concentrated expression, Eternimus began to cut through the bush, driving it back slowly but surely. While I understood that he knew about how to deflect Faye's trap, it was an interesting spell nonetheless. If anything, it was able to, show, to slow down enemies and attack them as I went on. A good distraction. As Eternimus reached the center, he rammed his spear into the spot where the brush sprouted from, causing the branches around him to wither and die, fading into the air like they were never there. Wow, that was pretty cool. I had to admit, it looked really cool even to the end. It was very effective and I was going to learn it. Go me! Faye turned and smiled at me, bobbing a bit in excitement in the air in excitement. Isn't it? It's one of my favorite trap spells. What's even cooler is that if you throw it at a person, they'll be covered in thorns and won't be able to fight back! That is cooler. That was a game changer. I stared at Faye, shocked. It could really do stuff like that? Then again, there wasn't a really good way to test it because none of us wanted to be the one to be on the receiving end of that spell and there was no training dummies in the room. I had to take their word for it. Faye grinned before crossing their legs and sitting on the air, pondering. Um, what else to show you? Eternimus looked over and shook his head, walking back to his corner. Make the human try what you just did first before showing us something new. Alright, alright! Yeah, that's true. I need to learn the, that move before I learn something new. 
They looked over at me and waved their hands out of the, out into the room, gesturing me to do what they did. It was mildly adorable to see them do that, but I shook my head, my thoughts out, and focused on trying to replicate what Faye did. I looked, in, I looked at my hands, trying to focus on forming the green orb in my hands. I began to imagine it, hoping it would spark my energy to perform the spell. But I found that imagination wouldn't work, or at least wasn't enough. I glared at my the back of my hands, trying to figure it out. Fla Faye floated beside me and looked at my hands as well, tapping their chin. Hmm, maybe if you squint really hard or something. Eh? Faye. I turned my head to Faye, not wanting to be a bad student, but needing the teacher to actually teach me. Faye floated back up and bit, placing their hands, oh, sorry, in front of them by their chest. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, it's like, uh... Like what? Well, I mean, you're a human, and I don't exactly know if you have magic and stuff, like, uh... Faye wiggled their arms beside them, flailing a bit before flying around me and scratching their head. Like, group demons have, like, uh, rage energy to battle, and then Diana has her ooh-la-la kind of sexual energy or whatever to power her powers. But for me, it just comes naturally, you know? I just think about it and poof, it happens. But I'm a demon, so it's supposed to happen. I nodded, understanding what they meant, but I pressed forward, knowing humans could perform magic if they wanted to. We had energy too, after all. Well, can you show me... Can you show it to me again, or maybe do it with me or something? Faye chapped their chin, listening to me, before nodding and turning to the side. They pointed their hands out and focused on their fingers, which caused me to turn into the same. I stared as Faye took a breath and mimicked them perfectly. I was going to do this one way or another. I looked to my hands and tried to focus one more time. I tried to imagine my energy flowing into my hands and forming the green orb hoping it would spur the action to happen. Come on. Finally, something in my mind clicked. I closed my eyes and began fo- and I closed my eyes and focused on my breathing, feeling the air flow through my body. I began to mentally scour my body, taking note of the inhales and exhales I released before figuring it out. I concentrated on the air in my body, imagining it to be like the energy I imagined myself to have. Like that, I felt very faint waves pulse through my body, confirming that I indeed had energy to use, and a lot of it. I smiled and looked to my hands again, knowing and feeling the energy within me, before committing to call it forward into a green orb. Obediently, my energy began to flow into my hands, making them blow lightly before forming an orb just in front of my palms. It began to pulse and grow in size, making Faye look over and gasp. Holy crap! I grinned from ear to ear as I continued to focus on the orb. Once it had become the size of both of my hands, I grasped onto it and pulled it over my head before chucking it into the empty room. Just like Faye's orb, mine popped once it crashed into the floor and formed large strings and lines of thorny branches, waving creepily in the air and releasing a threatening appearance. I couldn't have been prouder of myself. Faye zipped through the air happily, punching their fists into the air. I couldn't help but jump a bit as well. It was tough, but I had managed to pull it off. I felt a slight tingle in my hands and arms from using energy, but I didn't mind. Faye finally floated over to me and grabbed their hands, shaking them in joy. We are going to have so, so much fun training! I guess I don't have to ask if everything is okay in here. Oh, hi, Diana. Faye and I turned our heads to see Diana leaning against the doorway with a small smirk. I smiled and nodded, looking to the magic I had performed that was still wriggling in the center of the room. Faye released my hands and flew over to Diana, grabbing the succubus's hand and pulling her into the room. Whoa! Look! Is it so impressive? It's the second best spell I know and she mastered it! Wait, what? I stared at Faye in shock. This was their second best spell? They really trusted me to learn it and it was the second best? What was the first? What was the last? Diana observed the branch monster and I had essentially summoned and nodded with a chuckle. 
I told you, she's a powerhouse of energy. I'm not surprised that she could pull this off. Oh, I thank you, Diana. I felt a bit flattered that Diana had, that Diana believed in me, but Faye flew around Diana and flicked the succubus's hair, making Diana jump a bit and glare at the flying demon. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't tell me that she was awesome! I feel so flattered right now. I feel so, I feel, I feel awesome now. Diana chuckled a bit before laying out a sigh with a shake of her head. Of her head. I'll leave you be then. Have fun, dears. Faye was grinning from ear to ear as Diana turned on her heel and walked away. As soon as she left the room, Faye spun around me and lifted themselves higher into the air. Alrighty, let's make you the master of the thorn bush. I laughed and felt excitement rush through my veins. This was going to be fun. We spent the entire day focusing on how to make the spell happen quicker, faster, and come more naturally to me. I left exhausted but thrilled at what I was now able to do. Um, should I stop here? I don't know. Actually, yeah, I think I'm going to stop here for this video. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my videos, then click subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!